you drop this, Bruce. Only one panel of Vampire Hal Jordan. I'll allow it, but only because so much else is happening this issue. Greetings, comic lovers, and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from music comics new and old, history to anecdotes, truly wherever our whims take us. DC vs. Vampires number four. Things are heating up, or vamping up. Last issue was a lot of setup. Tensions were rising. Battle lines were being drawn. The results were truly awkward. We're the same, you and I, even though they aren't seen between Hal Jordan and Diana. We've been going through this issue by issue, which just kind of happened. Vampires are fun. I find them fun, at least. The reaction to the series has also been enjoyable, so that makes it fun to cover. Such as the Hal Jordan memes that have sprung up regarding the Banff I'll kill you multiple ways and look good while doing so depiction going on in this series. So if you've missed anything, of course, check out the playlist. But if you have no time, we'll have some cliff notes. Gets you up to to speed for those hopping in at lucky number four. Four is really not a lucky number in some cultures. I'm lucky number four. Cliff note time. There is a secret vampire cabal that is making moves to take over the DC universe. Hal Jordan, vampire extraordinaire, is working at the behest of a mysterious master to destabilize the Justice League and in particular turn suspicion away from himself. Batman, who is worn by Andrew Bennett, another vampire before Bennett was killed by Hal Jordan, had been working to uncover who is a vampire and who is not with the aid of the Bat family. His efforts have led him to Hal because he's not slick. He's extravagant, killing people with blood and the like, but he's not slick. The Arrow family is also aware of the vampire threat and is doing their own investigation. After turning, or seemingly turning, some people have theories, Wonder Woman, Hal and Diana went to the League and claimed it was Batman who killed Barry Allen. But really, it was Hal doing the most Jordan. You're caught up, let's do it. DC vs. Vampires is written by Matthew Rosenberg and James Tenney IV, with art by Otto Schmidt. Yes, all of it. Go Otto. He must be tired, because it's a lot. The cover is also by Schmidt, and it's a fun one conceptually. The Trinity, two of whom, Superman and Wonder Woman, are vampire and are restraining Batman. They're all upside down, so it looks like they're plunging downward. There's a nice effect with Superman's cape being part of the red color gradient that makes up the cover's background. It's simple, but one of the more eye-catching covers of the series so far. The variant for this issue is cool, too. This is the kind of cover where if you weren't reading it, you could conceivably be drawn to it. Like, ooh, what's going on there? Vampires? Or if you don't like them, you need to stay away from it. Just big X through that one. We open in London on Constantine, who's hanging out what is described by the characters as a dive bar, but it looks decently upscale in the art. Zatanna comes upon him, who was revealed last issue to be a vampire, and she asks him if they can go somewhere private. Of course Constantine isn't going to say no to Z. They have a deep, rich history, including being lovers and also him being responsible for the death of her dad. Memories. She's about to bite him, but he ensnares her. Dealing with the occult and the regular, it wasn't hard for him to spot that she was a vampire. You're not going to kill me? He's already dead. So what's it like being dead? It's wonderful. Every vampire in this series says that. They've unlocked the fun vampirism. This scene works well. You buy that Constantine would be less bothered by this change, though he should probably also be a bit more concerned as to how it happened than he is. But it is Zatanna, so he's not gonna just stake her. Not with a wooden stake, anyway. Wow, I just noticed how far down his sideburns went. He could start some mutton chops at that length. Bruce and his shorter, more trim sideburns is in the Bat Cave, trying to amass as many blood samples as possible to see how widespread the vampire scourge has become. This is when he very realizes he's not alone. Surprise, Green Arrow! Sorry I'd have to go down this way, Bruce, but I wasn't too eager to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you. Not that I couldn't. Sure, Jan. Go back to the Arrow Cave. Do you think that Green Arrow would be able to sneak into the Bat Cave without being detected? Because later on, they're going to say that he bypassed the security. Mileage varies. I'd buy it if it's one of those histories or verses where they've known each other for a long time and moved in the same circles because they're of a similar social class, which is something that some writers lean into and others don't. Ugh, this is bad. This is a cool page, although the stake is looking a little flat, like he's about to shank him, not stake him. Still awesome. The use of light and shadow, very dynamic. I would get this panel as a poster. Evocative. Barbara and Nightwing are continuing their investigation and flirting all the while. Batgirl has uncovered some ancestral dirt, which is exciting when you're dealing with vampires because we're dealing with the lore that they need to sleep in the original dirt. Take it from home. She's tracked it to Mary, the Queen of Blood, whose death was the catalyst for everything according to Andrew Bennett. So maybe if they can track why she came to Gotham and what happened, they'll have a clue as to the master. Also, don't think I didn't see that bent over panel. I saw it. It was appreciated. Probably Probably not as much as by Nightwing, but still. You come for me in my own home. I know, rude. The fight between Ollie and Bruce is brief but intense. Both thought the other was a vampire. It's really funny when you think about it that this was Ollie's plan. It's very haphazard. Just come in and try and take him out. What was plan B? Does Black Canary know he came off to do this? She probably rolled over, woke up, there was a note, gone to kill Batman. Constantine and Zatanna are having a lovely chat when Dr. Fate shows up. And ruins everything. What happened is so abrupt, I had to reread it several times to make sure I hadn't missed anything. She jumps at him, so Constantine restrains her, and then Dr. Fate obliterates her. She explodes into many magical pieces. 
R.I.P. Constantine is upset, but perhaps not as devastated as some might expect. Maybe. I mean, he's seen a lot of things, but you'd expect a lot more. It is Zatanna. Then he gets recruited because he's got to go do stuff and he's annoyed by it. Bruce and Ollie are now trying to organize and pool their information. There's a nice exchange that sets the tone between them. It paints them as friends and it reads quite naturally. There's a fondness depicted of having known someone for a long time. It's also a nice scene for Bruce because it softens him and is working in the yes, he's Batman, but Bruce is also a person with family and friends, or at least people he cares about. What's for fans of a more emotional Bruce, not the precog machine who can't handle any emotions at all, will be a welcome change. You know I don't live here, right? My point remains. You came to murder me on a hunch. No, I... I have other sources. The smile that Bruce gives him here, the soft smile, it's a nice little detail, but it brings the moment together and you know these two are going to be a team. And it also creates a connection, a kind of emotional depth to the scene so that if anything happens after, you're gonna feel a bit sadder about it, in theory, if you're connecting with what's going on. Contrast that with what happened with Zatanna, which was just very abrupt, blink and you miss it. Bruce then breaks the news to Ollie that it's Hal. Hal's the person who killed Barry. I'm not quite sure how he went from knowing that Hal killed Zan to making the leap to Barry. Maybe it's because Hal's been acting so suspicious this entire time. Ollie is shocked, but not really that upset because they're not close in this, which works well for me, hard traveling heroes and everything after. But for those who are fans of their friendship, those who are more familiar with that history and who read their relationship through that lens, this may feel like it's not having the impact on Ollie that it should. I was more surprised he didn't go get him first. Ollie never misses a chance to yell at Hal or berate him, or call him derogatory names, or punch him in the face. Good times. I know, I'm too salty about this. What's a depiction of a relationship that everybody says is one way and you feel is another that is your hill? Because this is mine. There's space, come join me. Hell is powerful, but I don't think he's the top. Insert your jokes here. Vampires have a rigid power structure, a formal hierarchy that they almost always follow. Red Hood and also Batgirl, Cassandra Kane are also investigating, and their ensuing battle with Gorilla Grodd, who pieces out by turning into a bat, leads them to find a Joker card on the premises. Vampire Joker! Been done before. Look at this panel where it looks like the eye holes on Cassandra's costume are sewn shut. Awesome. Batman wants to know if Ollie is capable of taking down someone he truly cares about, which is also a very forthright and introspective way of him saying that he knows that he's not the most important person to Green Arrow. But Ollie says he's not sure. Ask him again when the time comes, which is probably foreshadowing for the fact that he's gonna have to do just that. The alarm goes off and it's Diana. And she comes at them very oddly saying that she knows that Bruce killed Barry, but she knows it wasn't his fault. He was sick. He needs help. He has a blood sickness. I have questions. Is this a ploy? Is it something that her and Hal came up with to sell to the Justice League? Or is this what he told her and made her believe? As a fledgling, is she that much under his thrall? Please don't let it be that. <laughs> you drop this, Bruce. Yay, vampire hell sighting. Oliver, it's an infection in your blood. You aren't yourself. Let us help you. Then the rest of the league, or at least Superman, Hawkgirl, Cyborg, and Martian Manhunter burst into the cave. When Superman says, it's all right, they're gonna help them, Batman tells Green Arrow, it's on. The two of them versus the Justice League. Next issue, they fight. Okay, they're gonna have to pull out some stops to take down all these super powered members of the Justice League. I'll start stretching now so I can suspend my disbelief next month. I mean, we're already gonna have to assume a lot of things. Martian Manhunter isn't reading anything is wrong, or are they all supposed to be turned? Those are two different types of questions. One is lore slash ability based, the other is story based. The latter could be being withheld for dramatic purposes, but the former could be something that's just being ignored. It is a bit of a hard sell the League would just buy a, yeah, they have murderous blood. Who are you gonna believe? Batman or Hal Jordan? I guess that's why you had to turn Diana. She's more credible than him. This issue was decent, but there were still some questionable moments. As mentioned last time, at this point in time, you'll know if the tone is for you, if this is up your alley. This is aiming for more exciting, action-packed mystery, but also a fun one with an overall aura of it's not that deep and one shouldn't take it all too seriously. And that's gonna adhere largely to its own internal logic, which might not match some of the external pre-established lore necessarily, which some will enjoy and others will not. The anticipated meeting of Batman and Green Arrow was abrupt but an engaging sequence, and it was nice to see these two come together as it made it feel like the anti-vampire side had secured a win. Whereas in the first few issues, it was very much about the vampires gaining territory or gaining members or moving forward. Plus this issue introduced the idea that the magic users were going to organize and that some already were and get in on the fight. As there are still questions as to how widespread this is, how many people know, although by this point with all the people just vanishing or being killed, everybody should know that something is at least up. The deaths still feel rather abrupt. If Satana truly just got scorched like that, for some it may feel like a waste to introduce her and then just have her be yeeted by a god of order. For some it may read as this is an attempt to show that there are stakes, that anybody can be taken out at any time. But for others, the way that it's being presented or implemented may make it feel too cavalier and a connection can't be made. It may just feel random. And rather than making it feel unsafe, 
safe, it may just make it feel a bit silly. It depends on whether or not the tone and pacing are working for you, which may also ricochet down to characterizations or reactions. In fairness to this series, the characters are remaining consistent to their characterizations within it, but some may not find them matching their overall universe counterparts, which may lessen their enjoyment, as for some they believe that the worlds can shift, but the characters must remain consistent or there is nothing. The pace is still moving forward at a decent speed, and it doesn't feel as though it's dragging, though some may feel that more could be being done with each issue. The investigation sequences from the Bat family feel as though they're about to bear some fruit, and the mystery of who is pulling all the strings still does hold interest. Or does it? You tell me, I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think of this issue? Do you think that Batman and Green Arrow could take down the entire superpowered Justice League, or at least the people who are there? If so, how? Do you think Wonder Woman is under Green Lantern's thrall? Are you enjoying this story or having a hard time suspending your disbelief? Was Vamp Zatanna a waste of time if she's truly that? I keep saying if because I'm hoping. <laughs> tell me things down below. While you're down there, please do all the YouTube things. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so that you never miss a vid. Thanks so much for taking this time of day spent discussing comics with me. I always appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.